What is going on guys, this is Daniel, and with the Rockets trading Clint Capella and acquiring Robert Covington, something extremely interesting is now going on. The Rockets now play no center, and according to the NBA's new measurements, Covington is their tallest rotation player at 6'7". Since the trades, they're 2-2 two two with nice wins over the Lakers and Celtics, and a bad loss to the Suns without Westbrook, so not a bad start. Next week, I'll take a look at their defense, but today I'm focusing on their small ball offense and how opponents are trying to defend it. So let's get to it. Let's start with their 5 out spacing which is incredibly difficult to defend and also very simple. They spread the floor usually with a player in each corner and now one of their creators can attack the rim. This spacing benefits everyone but particularly Westbrook as he doesn't have a step back 3 like Harden. To be effective he has to get to the rim and now he can at ease. Here, notice how he takes his time bullying Kuzma in the paint, and still, no help comes. Compare that to before with Capella in the game. Here, Russ backs down Barden, but Capella is in the lane and he brings the 7 foot Jokic with him, and with less room to operate, Westbrook is forced to settle. And since that trade, Westbrook has put together three stellar scoring games against good defenses, so we'll see to what extent he can keep this up. Also, not only is there now a lack of help at the rim, but at times the driving gaps on the perimeter are simply massive. Here Russ has space to drive in either direction with no gap defender in sight, in large part due to Bradley staying glued to Harden 40 feet from the rim, which is how some teams defend Harden. The spacing also frees up cuts and slips to the basket. Here's a concept the Rockets like to use where House will set up a screen for Harden, but then he'll slip the screen toward the rim. Two defenders stick with Harden, and with no one in the paint, House gets an easy bucket. Here it's Westbrook who will set up a screen for Harden to get the handoff, and the slip will completely fool the defense, leaving him wide open. In terms of what they run, it's very, very simple. A lot of isos, and here Harden briefly isos, draws a double team, and Westbrook scores at the rim. They'll also use high ball screens to take advantage of specific defenders. Here Covington screens to get Crusoe switched on to Harden, and then they can play off of that. Here Harden again gets doubled, so off of those rotations they get into a nice driving kick sequence. Basketball is prettier with space. And lastly, their spacing allows for a dynamic transition attack because it's hard to match up with shooters, especially for defensive big men who are used to running toward the paint. And to understand some of the math behind Mori's decision, let's look at some numbers. So on the season, they score a very good 113 points per 100 possessions. But in lineups that have Westbrook and Capella, two poor three-point shooters, their offense takes a dive. And when Westbrook plays with Tucker at center, their offense is elite. And in general, when Tucker plays center for them, with or without Russ on the floor, their offense is elite. So that's the primary thinking. Replace Capella with a decent shooter in Covington, who complements Westbrook better, and try to have an unstoppable offense. Next, let's talk a bit about their off-ball movement, and while their team DNA isn't wired to move much, there are some simple things they can do as they get more accustomed playing 5 out, one of which is to utilize a cut from the corner. So here Harden drives, and we see that the low man comes to help, and without a center along the baseline, there's ample space for House to cut in from the corner. Notice how his man is occupied as the help defender, and here House gets an alley-oop on the cut. Here we see the corner cut again. Gordon drives and look at the space Cephalosha has on the cut. Tucker is in the corner most often and we'll see if he can take advantage of this cut. On this play we see he has a couple opportunities to cut with his defender Aiden as the low man facing the ball, but he never moves from the corner. I also like when they use flare or pin in screens. Here's a nice one, Westbrook is looking to attack, and Cephalosha sets a flare for Covington, and he gets an open 3. And this one caught my eye, here even Harden is active off ball, pinning in for Covington. 
They're best at using these pin and screens when Harden gets doubled on top. Notice here how Harden gets doubled, and this will often create a 2 on 1 advantage towards the corner. So notice how House sees this, pins in for Tucker, and it's a wide open 3. And here when Harden gets doubled, it's Tucker screening for House in the corner. Now what makes Houston so interesting to watch is that defenses will try unique things to try to slow down their offense. So let's take a look at a couple things we've already seen through four games. The first is that Utah put Gobert on Westbrook. And I like this idea, putting their rim protector on Westbrook to dissuade him from getting easy drives and scores, and here Rudy contains him nicely one on one. And when they were matched up together, Rudy did a pretty good job and here his length bothers the jumper. That being said, Westbrook still had 39 points. Some when Gobert was on the bench, but other times, Russ had success going right at him. I still like the idea. Get your rim protector on Westbrook, and also now your rim protector has more freedom to help in the paint off ball, since he's guarding a poor shooter. And here we see Gobert help off ball. Maybe this would have worked well for LA. When AD was in, he was on Westbrook, but when AD was out, they had a defender on Russ who he could bully, and here with Caruso on him, Russ backs him down and draws a double team. And hopefully you guys know this off of the double team, House set a great pin in screen to take advantage of the 2 on 1 they had off ball. So maybe next time the Lakers play the Rockets, they'll try some minutes with McGee on Westbrook and here after a switch, McGee does a good job one on one. Next, the Celtics did something interesting. So a lot of teams will straight double Harden on top, but what Boston did was instead they just got really aggressive in the gaps. Check out how they are forming a shell around Harden, limiting the driving space. The downside is, this can give up some catch and shoot threes. But the strategy was pretty effective in the first half, and without doubling Harden, Smart can recover on the pass here and prevent the three. Here, Brown is so focused on helping against Harden in the gap that he lets his man Covington cut right behind him, but Tatum does a nice job of picking Covington up and the Celtics scramble accordingly. I also like how they are even willing to help in the gap some off Harden. Even if it is helping off of Harden, it's important here not to give Russ a wide open gap toward the middle. So I definitely liked Boston's game plan, but in the third quarter, Harden showed why teams do double him outright. Because even with Kemba in the gap here, Harden always has that step back 3 he can go to. Then less than a minute later, he gets free throws with the threat of the step back, and on the very next possession, he hits one over Marcus Smart. Then less than 2 minutes later, he hits another one over Smart, and all of a sudden, it's a 12 point Rockets lead. And this is why the Rockets can be so fun to watch. Opposing coaches have to get creative to stop a ridiculous offense and two dynamic stars. Will more teams defend Westbrook with a center? Will that slow him down? Will teams continue to double Harden even with the improved spacing? Or will they simply aggressively gap him? On March 25th, will the Bucks continue with their runway defensive scheme? You know, where they give Harden a righty drive? These are questions I'm interested in, so I'll be tuning in for the X's and O's and to see true small ball in the NBA. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.